Very good. Okay, so yeah, thank you very much for, for giving me the opportunity to speak here and present some things that I've been working on together with my collaborators, Mark Bagden, who was here a couple of weeks ago, Andre Hulik and Daniel Waldram, and the results can be found in these papers. And this thing is, doesn't have to be <laughs> secret. So what I would like to talk about is um, particular interplay between these things, ge exceptional generalized geometry, consistent truncations, and Poisson Liu duality. Um, and so I want to demonstrate that these are some physicsy things that can be put on some nice common solid ground in terms of algebraids, some, some class of algebraids. And uh, I want to demonstrate that these algebraids provide an effective tool to study, to tackle these types of physicsy questions and some other, other ones as well. So let me start with a uh, little bit a physics motivation. So we talk about exceptional generalized geometry. So we, I will use this to motivate structures that I will introduce in a moment. So yeah, this is this is based on an exposition by a famous article by Coimbra, Strickland, Constable, and Boldrum. Boldrum. Twenty fourteen. So, okay, so where does, where does this come from? And what does it mean that it's exceptional and generalized and all that? So, so, if, you, so if you start with an eleven dimensional supergravity, so that's like a famous theory, low energy effective limit of M theory. So if you start with eleven dimensional supergravity and you compactify it, or sorry, if you, if you reduce it down to N dimensions, and it turns out that the theory that you will get, it's, somehow miraculously features the exceptional groups, so that that's where the name exceptional comes from. Um, so, for instance, the theory that you will get in this way, it will have some symmetries, and you can assemble these symmetries, and you can look at them as being sections of, or that their infinitesimal parameters, the symmetries can be seen as sections of some particular bundle. So here M is an n-dimensional manifold, and this is a, some random, rather, rather randomly looking bundle which has some tangent bit, two forms and five forms. And this is to be, to be translated in the physics in, in in the statement that the infinitesimal symmetries of the theory are, govern, are given by, by diffeomorphisms, by two form gauge transformations and some other five form bit. Now, the beautiful thing about this is that the fibers of this bundle, they carry an action of the exceptional group. And I will also append this extra R plus vector. Uh, so first, okay, I should tell you what this what this group is. So, okay. so there is a list of these groups. I will focus on the case where when n is, and this n here is strictly smaller than seven, so with at most six. And I will, at the end, I will tell you maybe why. So, so there is one exceptional group which is E six. This, this little double notation means that, in fact, what we are considering here are not the complex Lie algebras, but are the split real forms of those algebras. Uh, and but but what appears in those theories is that you, you apart from E6, E7, E8, you also get extensions in both ways, depending on just you, you just look at the thinking diagrams and you chop the nodes. So E55 is in fact the same as SL55, E44 is the same as SL5, and etc. So, so the truly exceptional group is only the E6 thing, but uh, yeah, but it's still called exceptional. And, uh, and, the, and the representation, which is in the fibers of these bundles is given by, is a fundamental representation corresponding to these nodes that they colored. Okay, this, this case is rather, this is a semi-simple thing, but okay, you can ignore it. So, so there, is, there is some particular representations and depending on n, that's where the fibers of these things are. Um, okay, just for short term notation, I will call it G. So this bundle has some, apart from carrying the action of the exceptional group, it has a nice bracket. 
So you, just as if you have a bracket on the space of vector fields, then if you have such an extended thing, if you take two, two guys from there, so vector field two form and five form, and a second such thing, then there is a nice and particularly interesting bracket given by lead derivative and then contraction and another bit. So at this moment, it's not, okay, I mean, it, it's just a random expression that I wrote, but the claim is that together with this bracket, this thing becomes a particularly nice type of structure. So it's a Leibniz algebra in particular, satisfies a version of the Jacobi identity or Leibniz identity. And uh, for those of you who know about current algebra, there's also a way to, I can add some other stuff here. I can add some twists. So if I take F4, a closed or form, and I can twist this bracket by adding something. So this is a two form. And then something else. By the way, please do interrupt me if you have any questions. I, if I'm going too slow or too fast or anything. This, this is supposed to be an introduction for the following parts. No, no, no. This is not, this is not a current algebra. It's, it, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a more, it's, it's a different type of structure. It's related to current algebra. It's a, some sort of a higher version of that. It's, it's, it's not a current algebra because, um, sorry. Yes, yes. If, if I, yeah, this is, yeah, in that, yeah, exactly. It, it's, it doesn't have a natural inner product, for instance, but it has something else. It has a, it, instead of carrying the O N N structure, it carries a structure the ENN structure. So there is a parallel with that. Uh, that's actually kind of important. But the point is that it is, a, it is a sort of more general type of structure and kind of that's where I'm getting forward. I want to introduce a theory for these class of structures and, and build a theory parallel to the theory of current algebra, which would explain these notions above. Yes, it's still Leibniz. Um, okay. That's a very good question. I don't, um, so yes and no. So there is a, if, if you, so the structure which I will introduce later or structures of this type, for those you can build some sort of, if, if, if you see those things as sort of exact, then, then there exists a approach to capturing them, which is kind of NQ. But in general, there, there is no such thing. I don't know about any such thing. I mean, if you, if you, if you go beyond the exact case and uh, I think it probably doesn't exist in the in the standard form, but but it's 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 a, it's, it's an important question that is under investigation. But it seems that you maybe have to go a little bit beyond. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, what, what the, the question was whether I can build some sort of. I guess the question was if I can build some sort of thing similar that you have for current algebra, and uh, right, and and so so in general, no. For exact ones, yes, sort of. This one is exact, yes. Right. So, so in in one part of the story, you can do that, but more. But in general, like, there is for current algebra, you have a in general, you have the the, the yes, I know. Uh, but but th there is no such thing here. But there is there is a thing that you can do with exact current algebra. You can build a different type of interpretation which doesn't use the symplectic structure, you just, you can treat them as some sort of uh, graded bundles over the shifted tangent bundle and that thing survives here. But not the symplectic interpretation. There is, the symplectic interpretation is, in, in a, now that I'm talking about it, it's kind of related to the fact that normally you would have the orthogonal group here. And the orthogonal group in the odd thing, you can interpret, I mean, you will have an inner, in, for current algebra you have an inner product, and an inner product in the odd sector is seen as a symplectic form. And here there is no such thing, instead there is something something else, some other structure that leads to some. Uh, in, in, the, in, the, in this, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, in this exact case, yes, but, but not in the general exceptional algebra that I haven't introduced yet. 
Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I can I can comment it on later when I will introduce the, this more general class of structures. But yeah, that's a good point. Thank you. Uh, so just just to carry on with with this thing. So there is a. Interestingly, you can do a similar thing if you don't start with ten-dimensional supergravity, but if you start with ten-dimensional type two, either A or B supergravity. So it's a different thing. So this is relative to brains. This is relative to strings. And interestingly, if you do the same thing, but in, you reduce it down to n minus dimensions, then again the, 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 the theory will become more horrible. But there will be still a bundle which starts as a current algebraic, but it has other bits. You will have uh, it happened either even or odd in homogeneous forms. And then there is some other bit. So this is some sort of enhancement of current algebraic story. Uh, this, in fact, is also in a, a representation. It carries a representation fibervise of the exceptional group, of the, and it's the same representation. It's, it's just. Uh, if you look at the dimension, it's the same as this one here. What, but m is now n minus one dimensional, so this is a different decomposition. And similarly, there is a bracket, which I'm not going, I'm not even going to write it down because it's horrible. It's kind of long, and there is possibility of possi one can twist it with many ways, many things. But the story goes exactly as here. But it's just more complicated to write it down explicitly. Now, what is true in both these cases is that. If you reduce this, this 11 dimensional or 10 dimensional type to be supergravity, apart from, so, so those things, they capture the symmetries of, the, of that theory. But apart from the symmetries, you can capture the bosonic field content. The bosonic field content. So as I said, those are some supergravity theories. And it turns out that you can capture the bosonic field content in terms of a reduction of a structure group. So here, those things have a structure group, which is this ENN times R plus, I would just call it G. And if you pass from that, if you reduce the structure group from that down to its maximally compact, I will, this, this just means that it's the maximally compact bit of G. So this reduction of the structure group is equivalent to specifying all the bosonic fields of the theory. So you can think, if you, if you know about GR, general relativity, then this is the same thing happening there in the general relativity, supposing if you are interested in it in the, in the Riemannian signature, you can see the metric as, as a reduction of the structure group from GL and R down to the maximally compact bit. That's the same as having a metric. And this thing generalizes in this context. So you can neatly, abstractly, even though in particular cases, this, this thing is rather diverse in different dimensions. If I just call it G, then the same, all these theories have the same structure, both in here and in here. And the, story, the, the parallel goes even beyond that. So just as in general relativity, you can start building Levi-Civita connections. And you can build curvature tensors out of them, although it's a little bit more, more subtle. For instance, you can build a Ricci tensor, in a sense. And then the claim is that vanishing of that tensor, then if you, if you really decompose it in bits, it precisely gives you the equations of motion for this for this bosonic field in the theory. So, so the, there is a nice generalization of GR in this context, where instead of, ha of dealing with the tangent bundle, you have this kind of more complicated or even more complicated beast. And you can also do fermions. If you take the double cover of this group, so you take the, the double cover of that and then uh, take some associated bundles, and you can see fermions as sections of those. So, sorry, for, uh, this was just to, to, to persuade you that this is a interesting thing to study. But I will not be dealing with those things. I will be dealing with these algebraids, which is a bit more, little bit more concrete. Okay. So one last physics bit that I want to mention before passing to some more concrete mathematical objects is that physicists are interested in a particular question of, which is called consistent truncations. And I will use this as a uh, physic, physical input for the investigations that are to follow. So, so consistent truncations is, is, a, is a thing when you have a theory, such as 
this one or this one in higher dimensions and you want to reduce it down. And so if you have a higher dimensional theory on some product of two manifold, let's say n, okay, m in some compact bit, you see. Uh, so you, if you have, let's say, 11 dimensional theory living on this product, then if you want, the, if this is compact, you can try to imagine that as a theory living here. But the, pr the, the price to pay is that now you have to deal with infinitely many fields. If at the beginning you had finitely many fields, if you want to see those things, if you, ca if you expand them in some whatever harmonics or something here, then you will get infinitely many fields from this lower dimensional perspective. But sometimes you can, re you can, you can truncate this, this infinitely many fields into some finite sector, and you can do it consistently, uh, meaning that solutions of lower dimensional theory will lead to solutions of the full dimensional theory. Anyway, there is a particular class of consistent trunc of, of things called consistent truncations, and it was shown that if you require some maximal supersymmetry condition, then this is the same. It was shown by Lee, Strickland, Constable, and Waldram in 17. Then. In terms of these algebras, it corresponds to find the, to something which is called Leibniz parallelizations. And okay, and from now on, I will be a little bit more rigorous. So yes, maximally supersymmetric. Uh, actually, the reason I was kind of very, very quick here was that I, I don't, or for the purpose of this talk, I don't, the, the, this physics things is not important for what is to follow. I just want to, to basically what to get here and then to talk about these objects. So the Leibniz parallelization is by, defini is, is by definition a situation when you can find, so this means that there exists a global G frame. What is E alpha? Such that if you take the bracket of two members of the frame, and because it's a global frame, then you can always expand it in in the frame itself. But you want that these are constant. So this is what it means to be Leibniz parallelizable, and there is just. Uh, G is that group, this one, because it's 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 I'm too lazy, so I don't want to write this every time. This is G. So you you can play this the same type of game in in ordinary geometry. You can ask when if you just take the tangent bundle, and you can ask like when is it that I can find the global frame for this bundle such that if I take the commutator of two such members, then I will get something with constant coefficients, and this is a known thing, that the thing essentially has to be, a, the manifold, base manifold essentially has to be a group or some discrete portions thereof. But here there turns out to be a little bit more freedom. That's what is interesting for physicists. So basically the question that I want to, the, the question that this, this leads to is that what are the spaces M for which you can find a Leibniz parallelization of this bracket, or of this bracket. And uh, that's kind of the motivating question for this investigation. And uh, this is what I want to turn to, and I will give you an answer, or a partial answer to that. So are there any questions before that? Uh, so yeah, so this is the, so, so I'm looking for spaces M, such that when you take this bundle or this even more nasty looking bundle, uh, by the way, sorry, I didn't say this is, this is the, th there is two theories, there is type 2A and 2B, and they correspond to having even or odd forms here. So I'm looking for, I'm, I'm searching for spaces M, such that if you, if you take this bundle over them with this bracket, potentially twisted with some twists, that that there will exist a global frame with constant structure coefficients. Uh, yes, so, so in this case, the compact part, the, 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 how, 
Yeah, the compact, I switched to, yeah, the compact part, the C is the M there, sorry. The, 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 I, this, is, this is the compact bit that I want to be parallelizable. Yes, sorry, I, I messed up the notation. Yes, M is supposed to be compact. Uh, yes, yes, uh, yeah, I mean, this thing you can play with any manifold, but I, I will be interested in finding specifically compact manifolds on which you have this Leibniz parallelization. Yes. Yes, but, but I, uh, that's, uh, yes, but, but I am <laughs> restricting myself to this case. But yeah, yeah, that, that, that's right. You can, in general, do that, and people do. Okay, very good. Um, so now, in order to answer that question, I will, I will actually simplify the problem a little bit, and instead of dealing with this exceptional thing, I will deal with current algebraids, and I will tell you how the story works in generalized geometry, in current algebraids, where it's actually easier, you can, you can solve it easily, and then I will just tell you in parallel what is the result for the exceptional case. The second part will deal with the more standard story of generalized geometry, which is for me just a synonym to current algebra. Uh, so, in the setup of generalized geometry, the game to play is 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 the kind of the same, but it's simpler. So, this is related. The, the one here is related to eleven-dimensional supergravity or M theory, type two A B supergravity or string theory. In this case. It's just the bosonic string theory, which is kind of simpler. So the bundle that people study here is just the direct sum of the tangent and cotangent bundle. Uh, and uh, this thing has a natural action of the orthogonal group because there exists a natural pairing on fibers of this bundle. So if I take, if you take a vector in a one form, and another vector in the one form, then there is natural pairing, which is given simply by pairing covectors and vectors. So in particular, having two vectors gives zero, and having two covectors gives zero. And this, this inner product has a split signature, so it's preserved by the ONN group. So in order to give it a full parallel line, I need to tell you about a bracket there. So the bracket there, there is a natural nice bracket, which is given by, best way to write it in this script. And as before, you can twist it with a three form. So H3 is a closed three form. So there is again an interesting bracket there. It captures, if you relate this to bosonic string theory, then it captures the symmetries of the low energy effective action of string theory, namely the diffeomorphism invariant and one form gauge transformations. But from mathematical viewpoint, it's just a particular algebraid. And you can ask the same question here. I can, I can, if you forget about the, the, the other stuff, I can ask again, what are the possible spaces that admit Leibniz parallelizations? So Leibniz parallelization in this context, it just means, uh, it means that I take a, gl a global G frame, G in this case is just replaced by the orthogonal group. So I'm looking for a global orthonormal frame. alpha with with this constant coefficient um, and this is an easier question to answer in particular because the answer is known okay so how do how does one answer such a question and 
So the easiest way for me to answer that question is to embed this, these objects into a slightly larger class of objects, which are called current algebraids. Let me make a definition, although probably most of you know, but I will still. So current algebraid. is given by the following data. Um, so first there is a vector bundle. And uh, together with uh, the vector bundle is executed with a bracket. So this is a bracket on protections. It has a fiber-wise inner product, so inner product on the fibers. So exactly the structures that we have up there. And it has a vector bundle map um, called the anchor. It also appeared in, in Dima's talk. Um, so that, that last thing in our case is given simply by projection down to the first vectors. And there is a bunch of axioms, which I don't know if I, okay. Seems that I have time, so I, <laughs> let me write the axioms. If I take, let's say, A, B, C. So the first axiom tells you that the bracket preserves itself. The bracket is a derivation of itself, so which this is known as the Leibniz or the Jacobi identity. Uh, Then there is the axiom which, which says that the bracket preserves the inner product. And what else? Then there, then there is a bracket. Then there is an axiom which says what happens if you insert multiply the second section by a function f. So you can take it out, but you, there is also a way A acting on F. So again, this is some sort of Leibniz property. Okay, so here and here I'm using the anchor map to turn a section A into a vector field so that I can act on a function. And finally, the most, control, the, the most interesting axiom is that the bracket, if you look at the bracket up there, it's not skew-symmetric. So there is a symmetric part of the of the bracket. But that thing is constrained to be, it's given in terms of the inner product. So you take the inner product, you get a function on the base manifold, and you take the differential of it, so you get a one form, and then you take the transpose of the anchor, which sends you from T star into E star. But E star is the same as E because there is a pairing. There's natural identification. Okay, so this is the full definition. If you have never seen this before, then it's probably not terribly enlightening, but if you have seen this before, then you know what it is. Um, so perhaps more important than the definition are examples. So there is two classes of examples that are important for us. So example number one is that thing, which is called the generalized tangent bundle. In physics, so that thing over there, it's one important class of examples. And the second important class is when you take, is what happens if you take the base manifold M to be a point. If you do that, then rho has to be zero, and what you are left with is just one vector space, because that's a vector bundle over a point, together with a bracket and a pairing. And if you look at the axioms, for instance, this thing goes away, it's, it's basically a Lie algebra. So a special case when M is a point means that you have, that the, the, Lie, the current algebra just reduces down to a Lie algebra, G, with a bracket and with an invariant pairing. So such a thing is called a quadratic Lie algebra sometimes. Quadratic Lie algebra. A Lie algebra, with an invariant 
inner product. So those are two important classes of current algebras. And to finish this three minute crash course on current algebra, let me give you the most fundamental theorem in the, in the story, I guess. Due to Pavel. So, so if you're given a current algebra, there exists a an, an very nice criterion to, to check whether you can identify it with some with a generalized tangent bundle, with something of that form. So, statement, the statement is actually a little bit more interesting, but just the part which we need now is says that the Courant algebra is isomorphic to a generalized tangent bundle. If and only if certain sequence is exact. So for any current algebra, there exists a sequence where this map is the anchor map, and this thing is its transpose. This is a sequence that follows from the axioms. There is, this is always a chain complex. So always when you compose two things, two subsequent arrows, you get zero. That follows from the axioms. Now what, what Pavel proved is that uh, a current algebra is of this form, of that form, if and only if this thing is exact. Okay, very good. This is the end of the crash course. Yes? That's right. Thank you. Um, Oh, I didn't use that. You have one board. Okay, so now that we embedded the story in this little bit, a little more general setup, uh, we can try to answer the question about these parallelizations. So suppose that we start with a current algebra. So now we know that if we are looking for Leibniz parallelizable things of this form, then that's the same as looking for Leibniz parallelizable exact current algebra. Uh, sorry, the <laughs> a current algebra where this is exactly called an exact current algebra. So, so now suppose that we start with such a thing. Suppose that we have a current algebra. So this is a exact, meaning that sequence is exact exact current algebra, which is also Leibniz parallelizable. And for simplicity, I will also assume that M is compact. Assume that. Okay, so suppose that we have a current algebra which is exact and which is Leibniz parallelizable. Now, Leibniz parallelization means that you can, that there, is, there, is a glo there exists a global frame. Basically, it means that you can, you can write down that E is, I is isomorphic to the product bundle where E0 is some vector space. And you can see this E alpha, E alpha is to be a basis of the vector space. Okay, so this is a vector space. E alphas can be seen as a basis here. And the condition, the, the Leibniz parallelizability condition tells you that, um, that 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 space E0 actually inherits a bracket. This is, I, I'm, I'm doing, I should say that here I'm not doing anything terribly non-trivial. This is just a, yes, that's right, that is, yeah. It's the same thing, yeah. So, so yeah. So, so basically, it follows that this E zero is itself a current algebra, which is just to say that it's yeah the bracket closes under it. It's a current algebra. In this context, it's nothing terribly non-trivial to say that, but it's a current algebra over a point. Okay. 
because it's a vector space, it has a bracket which closes on itself, and it has an inner, it has a well-defined inner product, which is a consequence that I chose this A alpha to be orthonormal. Yes. Or, sorry, can you say that again? I, I missed the beginning. Yes, uh, it will mean the same thing here. It will be a, an action core and algebra. Yes. Uh, maybe I, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really used to working with this. Um, Sorry, a second. Okay, then, then, then yes. Okay, uh, so, um, right. So we get a current algebra over a point, but at the beginning we had a little bit more with data. There was some geometry, there was some M manifold behind. And uh, so, so we still, so this thing, I, this was a current algebra, so it had a bracket, it had a pairing, but it also had an anchor map. So anchor map, if I use this identification, okay, then it's basically a anchor map is a map from this thing into the tangent bundle here. And now, since this is a current algebra over a point, it essentially means that it's a, it's a, it's a quadratically algebra. So let me just do it like this. And if you look at it, this, this just says that, uh, this just says that there is an action, that the row is an action of the Lie algebra on M. The, the fact that it, the bracket is preserved, it follows from, from the axioms over there. So, so we started with a parallelizable exact current algebra, and now we have a, a Lie algebra, a quadratic Lie algebra, which acts on a manifold. Okay, no, nothing terribly deep has happened here. But now, if we haven't used the exactness, so the exactness has several parts. So in particular, exactness of this sequence means that this map is, is surjective, okay? So row is surjective. In terms of the action, it means that the action is transitive. Okay, so exact means, exact implies that this is transitive, transitive action. And since we assumed compactness somewhere here, then it should follow that you can actually lead this to an action of the group. So, so you can identify M with a quotient of, ah, okay, I, I see the clash of the notation. So I already used G, so let me call it D. Matfrag D, which looks like partial in my notation. So this means that you can identify the manifold with a quotient, where H is a subalgebra of D. Lisa algebra. So, so again, starting here, we basically got a pair of algebras where this is quadratic, it has an inner product, and this is a subalgebra. And this thing actually uniquely determines that structure. If you look at the at the at the arguments, you can go back. So, so if so, having this is a sufficient data to reconstruct the thing at the beginning. But not any such such pair leads to a parallelizable like exact current algebra. It's one reason is that if you look at the condition for exactness, um, okay, let's maybe say do it like this. So, so we know that by the theorem that exact current algebras are those that can be written in, the, in this form. And if you look at those algebras of this form, then there are other special, inf because if you take, for instance, the kernel of the, of the anchor, okay, so I want to say that this implies that the kernel of anchor is Lagrangian. And the way to see that is just in this specific identification. The, the anchor map is projection onto TM, so kernel is this bit, it is, is the second bit, is the covectors. But covectors, if you give me two covectors and the bracket there is zero, the, the pairing there is zero, so it's isotropic. But it's isotropic and it's half rank, so it's isotropic and half rank, therefore it's called Lagrangian. Okay, so maximally, so isotropic plus half rank. Okay, but now looking looking back at our situation, our algebra is 
just a product of this, but with here, with, with this, the algebra D, and the kernel of the anchor essentially corresponds to this, this subalgebra. So, so from this, it follows that the subalgebra has to be also Lagrangian. Lagrangian. Okay, so the summary is that whenever I have a Leibniz parallelizable Uh, exact current algebra it, over compact base, let's say, then I can I can craft I can create out of it a pair of a, of a quadratically algebra. So this is a quadratically algebra and a Lagrangian subalgebra. So this is called the Manin pair. Such such a thing. And, uh, okay, now, now it, it's slightly less, not less, uh, slightly more difficult to prove it in the other way, but this is a result not long ago from the work, you can look at Liebland, Meinerenken, this, this actually goes the other way as well, Meinerenken. This gives you, so this is a Correspondence. Okay, here I should be a little bit more careful. The, 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 it's not really one to one because you know, I mean, choosing these two Lie algebras, I can choose different groups that integrate them and take the quotient. But I mean, modulo that ambiguity. This is really a correspondence, like a one to one. So if you if you're interested in classifying all these Leibniz parallelizable exact current algebras, or in other words, Leibniz parallelizations of this of this structure, then the only thing to look at is basically these things, these one in pairs. So, okay. And one final remark before before passing back to the exceptional case uh, is that now that we we are here, it's it's just one step to talk about Poisson lit duality. The Poisson lit duality it appears in various disguises, but in the simplest case, it just corresponds. Ultimately, to the fact that you have you have a, you have a quadratically algebra and you have two different Lagrangian subalgebras, so two different edges, two Manin pairs with the same quadratically algebra. So um, the reason that this is called Poisson lit duality is that if you if you then follow this this procedure the other way, then you can construct two exact current algebra. It's one of them will be over G, oh, sorry, over D mod H. And the other one will be over D mod H prime. So the spaces in general will, will be different. They can have different topologies, for instance. And the, the non-trivial claim is that if you equip this thing with a thing called generalized metric and transfer it here and here, and you use it to build a sigma model, then those sigma models will be equivalent. That's why the name, this, this is due to Klimchik and, and Shevera. Okay. okay, very good. So, so this is how you answer the question in the in the current algebra case, where it's not very difficult. Yes. It, it, it's very strong, but like if you would if you would do the same thing just for the tangent bundle, then this would mean that the manifold has to be a group or, or a discrete quotient of a group. Here it's a little bit more freedom. Here you get these things. But basically, in, in a sense, you can say that in the ordinary case, it also corresponds to some sort of money in pair, but this other guy is zero. Uh, yeah, but that's all. Uh, uh, um, right. Um, something which is locally but not. Um, that's a good point. I didn't. I. I, I cannot tell you from the top of my head, but, but this thing here is a global thing, at least. But lo yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I, I have to think about it, sorry. Um, okay. Yeah. 
So now let me, in the remaining minutes, let me go back and tell you simply what the result is in this exceptional context. But as you can imagine, it's a little bit more tricky to prove, prove, and it's also, the result is slightly more difficult, complicated. So, so the first step following that procedure that I outlined before is to find a slightly larger class of structures in which one can embed these objects. So this we call them exceptional algebra, sorry, exceptional algebraids. And uh, I think the current algebra definition is just below. So, okay, uh, if I can cheat. Okay, I will cheat. <laughs> and, uh, right. So, okay, so first, before telling what this is, let's, let's go to the linear algebra ob corresponding object. So the idea of, of this, definition of the, of the exceptional algebra is to basically take the current algebra definition and to do some replacement. And the replacement is that you replace before in every fiber you had a vector space with a pairing and there was the orthogonal group which acted on it. Actually a different signature. So this was a current algebra. Right? And now you replace that with a case when you have a, again a vector space, but instead of an inner product which is a symmetric map, map from EE e to real numbers, you will, have, you will have a symmetric map to some other space, N. And you want that on all of these, there is an action of a group. In our case, it will be the exceptional group. So you want that these two are representations, and you want that uh, this map is equivariant. So that's, that's, that's the idea. You can, you can do it more generally with any triple of, of, a, of group and two of its representations. And it's actually an interesting question of how general uh, you can make the story to be in order that it's still interesting. But for us, I will focus on the case when this G was the exceptional group, this E was the representation that that we had we had here, those ones, and N will be the representation corresponding to the rightmost node. So this is the fundamental corresponding to the this node because that's what's that's what appears in, in string theory. Um, so yeah, the point is that there is just some particular Lie algebraic structure underlying these things. Now fixing that, we can write down the definition. So an exceptional algebra is it's given just as before. So I wanted to cheat and basically just copy these things. Okay, so. Fully. So exceptional algebra consists now of two vector bundles. Now I'm using a slight abuse of notation, so I'm, by this I mean that here, I, here those things are representations of the group. Here I, want, uh, here I want that they are associated bundles to those representations. So in particular there is a G structure behind and these two are associated bundles for that. But okay, it's not terribly important, but I have two vector bundles associated to those representations. And on top of that I have a bracket. And, and instead of a pairing, I don't have the pairing anymore because that was the thing that corresponding to Owen. Here that thing is replaced by the fact that those things have this G structure behind. So there is a G structure on E basically. And, and the anchor map, and there is still an anchor map. Okay, and there is a bunch of axioms which I'm not going to write down. This is where it gets a little bit tricky, but basically the idea is that you keep those three and instead of, and you have to modify this one by replacing this inner product here with the, with that, that map over there and then doing something with it. Like you can ask me afterwards. The, the idea, the important idea here is that it, that you can write down the meaningful definition paralleling the, the current algebra one. So there is some axioms. Um, at this point, I should say that there have been a similar work, similar structure in the work of Grutzmann and Strobel. Strobel called uh, V-twisted current algebraids. 
the twisted Grand Algebraids. Where their V is basically our N Grand Algebraids. So this is a similar thing. Uh, it's a little bit more general. So for us, we have some group structure behind. Yeah, I wanted to mention that there is this, this work, which is doing something similar. Uh, okay, now, so far that was the definition. Now there are some interesting claims. So first claim is that just as for current algebra, there was a natural sequence. You have such a natural sequence in this case as well, and that sequence is given by, by this sequence of maps. Notice that it's just a four term sequence, not five. And again, this is the, this is the anchor map. And this is the transpose of the anchor map followed with some Lie algebraic map coming from there. Uh, but yeah, the claim is that this is always a, this is always a chain complex. And now a non-trivial theorem is that, okay, this is a theorem which we proved in our paper, actually in the three papers because it's, there, there are three different setups. Um, yes. Yes, because there are three situations. There is the there is the eleven dimensional soup, there is two A and two B. And although they on as I wrote them, they look similar, they are kind of different in nature and uh, it gets progressively more and more complicated and requires some things. But but the ideology is the same. Uh, so first of all I should say that this is a local thing. So the Powell's theorem was global. This thing is local and I will comment on that in a second. But okay, so the claim is that if if this is exact if this sequence is exact, that sequence is exact. No, no, sorry, only here and here. Yeah, the, the thing is that this thing can be pretty big. It, it, you don't want it to, um, yeah. So only, ex exactness means only exactness here and here. That's, uh, thank you, that's a, that's a crucial thing. So, uh, so if, the, if, if the sequence is exact, then suddenly, so in Powell's case, locally there was only one choice because lo Okay, I didn't discuss the cohomological implications, but anyway, here you have two options. So you can have that if the manifold, if this thing is exact and dimension of the base manifold is n, then one gets precisely this first guy here. The, then locally, then we have a local isomorphism to that M theoretic setup. M theoretic. Uh, exceptional tangent bundle, by which I mean on that, that thing over there, thing down there. And the second possibility is that if it's exact and dimension is one less, then you get then you get the two B case from from here. Uh, from here. This is harder to prove. But what is even harder is to, to fit in the 2A case. So the 2A case corresponds to a going away from exactness. So if, uh, so if I call it C0, C, uh, C1, C2, C0. So exactness means that the cohomology here and here are zero. Now, if you uh, take the first cohomology to be, okay, let's call it not minimally non-exact, minimally non-exact. This means that the dimension of the H1 is one and the other one is zero. And the dimension is n minus one then you get the 2A case. Um, okay. So you can perform that classification again, basically paralleling the, the, the approach there that you find, you have the sequence, you, you, you split it, you, you, you find the split which has some suitable properties and then you can, then you constrain the form of the brackets from the axioms. And if you do that, then you will encounter some difficulties because it turns out that the bracket can be twisted just as here it was twisted by this tree form, which I erased. But here you, you will discover some other twists and you have to show that you can remove those twists locally. That's why this is a local classification. And just out of curiosity, if there is some string 
theory oriented people here, then I can tell you what the twists are because it's a rather neat result. Uh, so in the, in the first case, the twists is given by this four form that we saw before. So these are the twists. But you can also have a one form, uh, which follows kind of from the fact that there was this somehow related to this R plus here, which has to be there for some reasons. Geometrically, you can see this as a U1 connection and this, this thing to be covariantly closed. So instead of being closed, in general, you can take this is a connection and flat connection and this is a covariantly closed thing. Oh, okay, there is this subtlety. I'm, I'm, I'm okay, let me talk about, let me say a few words about the global classification. So the global classification is a little bit more tricky because, uh, as I said, locally, those things have some unique form and you can easily see that you can modify the brackets with some twists. But there is a question of patching these things together and global, global thing is not, not that easy to do. So, but at least you can say what the twists are. But, okay, sorry, but the, the claim is that it's not even clear in this case that you can find a glo that if you have an exact such object, that you can identify it as a bundle with a bundle like that. Already that thing is not, not clear. Okay, very good. So, so these are the twists for the n-theory case. In the M, in the type 2b case, uh, the twists consist of a flat GL2 connection. And uh, a covariantly constant doublet. This is, this is like a has two component vector of three forms, which is covariantly closed and a covariantly closed five form. And in this case, it's a, it's a mess because this is how it gets dark harder and harder. So in this case, you have twist by um, two possible zero forms, two possible one forms, a two form, a three form, a four form, satisfying a whole host of identity, of host, whole host of Bianchi identities. And uh, yeah, and uh, for lack of time, if you're interested, you can ask me about it later. Sorry for that. And uh, yeah, okay. So just just without without much details, you can then prove a similar similar thing here that you you can have Leibniz parallelizable objects of this form. They correspond precisely to something that you may call exceptional Manin pairs, which again correspond to a pair of a of a exceptional algebraid over a point and a, sp and a suitable subalgebra of that. And having different subalgebras corresponds to what is known as Poisson-Lee U duality. So that story gets a parallel. And there is some examples, but I don't have, unfortunately, time to go into that. So yeah, thank you very much for your attention. So, so, so the, the, the result here, so this is one result, the classification theorem. And the second result is that exceptional, sorry, Leibniz parallelizations in this case, so the original question that I was asking at the very beginning, Leibniz parallelizable parallelizations, which physically corresponds to these consistent truncations. So they correspond to something that you may call exceptional Manin pairs. And before, if you look at what, what it was before, so before it was a quadratically algebra, so a current algebra over a point, and a subalgebra of that. So in this case, it will be the exceptional Manin pair, it will be an exceptional algebra over a point, which is not a Lie algebra anymore, over a point. And this, instead of having H, you will have some co-Lagrangian or co-isotropic co subalgebra. And something we, we call co-isotropic uh, subalgebra. And in fact, there is, this is very difficult. There is also a bunch of conditions. There is also two conditions on top of that, which are 
partially what makes this a little bit na nasty, but they are they are trivially satisfied in the examples. So there is a little bit little bit extra, there is a little bit of complications. So this there is such that there is some conditions, not very restrictive ones, but it's interesting that they are there. And yeah, so yeah, that's what it is. 